If you have cats, you know that sometimes they act a little bit goofy. They see things that aren't really there. Sometimes I wonder if they're seeing things that are really there, but I don't see. Let's watch Fred as he uh, has one of those days. What do you see up there? I don't see anything. There's no spider or anything. Yeah? I hope you don't get a voice. You'd be like Buster crying everywhere you go. Piggy! Okay, Fred. I gotta go eat now. Okay, guys. I am going to ask you to pardon my mess a little bit while I show you where I'm at on this cabinet. Um, I mentioned to you as I was doing the amplifier that I had stripped it. You saw the stripping video, me taking all that nasty contact paper off. When I, the, so after I stripped it, I cleaned it thoroughly with lacquer thinner several times. I even got on this stuff here and hit it with a scotch pad with lacquer thinner and I still couldn't get that, that grain to take uh, stains. So, okay, I'm living with that. But I cleaned it all up, um, sanded it down to about oh, 600 grit, but still this stuff's pretty porous. So I shot it with two coats of shellac, shot it one day, let it dry a couple days, uh, sanded it smooth, and then shot it a second time, let it dry, and sanded it smooth again before I lacquered it. What I decided to do, and I talked to the guy that owns this radio about this, and he's happy with that idea because it looks a lot better than it did, is I decided to just leave this the color it is. It's got a nice rustic look to it. I like it. And it contrasts nicely with the mahogany on the top. The sides, on the other hand, look really good. I'm real happy with them. And this has got about, oh, I guess about five coats of lacquer. I shot the lacquer with my uh, HVLP gun, which I'll show you in a minute. You've got to get one of those if you haven't got one. I bought this thing about three years ago at Woodcraft. I didn't pay that much for it. I think I paid $300 for it. It is an, a, a self-contained HVLP. What HVLP stands for is high volume, low pressure. What does that mean? That means if you're putting low pressure, you don't get nearly as much of the, the blowback coming from it and nearly as much of the, the mist in the air and the overspray and stuff like that. It comes out much gentler and you put a lot of volume out. So you have to learn how to spray with one of these because you can easily overdo it. But you, you put this on there with the gun and it's using a motor like a vacuum cleaner motor, but in reverse down here in the base of it and it comes through this tube and into the uh into the spray gun right up here at the at the spray head all right otherwise it works like a standard auto body gun i've used lots of those you adjust the volume right here and then it has a tip and you pick tip sizes to suit what you're doing i'm not sure what tip size that is but it's a small one it's the small one of the smaller ones they sell and um you use this vacuum cleaner hose that comes with the unit. It all comes like this, a self-contained deal. I think I had to install this handle on it, and that was all. This is made in Great Britain. Erlex is the company. They still make these. They make really nice ones. But it sounds just like a vacuum cleaner when it's running. The air is taken in on the bottom side. There's a filter right here. I used to shoot cars with compressed air. And I got tired of that, so I bought from, uh, oh, I forget the name of the, the supply house, but I bought an HVLP for shooting cars. And it took me a couple of cars to get good enough at that thing to be proud of my work. But um, I, I did eventually get there, and it was just like a real big version of this. And it had a really long hose, and it was a nice unit. Well, I got tired of trying to shoot my wood cabinets with compressed air. Well, the better way to do it is to use an HVLP. You don't get nearly so much mist. And I have uh, this room I have set up as a large paint booth. Um, it's crude, but it works. And so I take the mist out. So, you know, I use much less paint because you're not wasting it by spreading it out everywhere. You're getting it where you want it to be. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention what I spray with this thing when I'm doing wood cabinets. If you live in the States or probably pretty much most of the Western world, it's getting more and more difficult to get good quality solvent-based lacquer, which is really what we all like to use, okay? You know, you, the environmentalists can talk all they want about water-based lacquer. I've tried it. It sucks. And I know some guys in the furniture restoring business 
they can buy that solvent-based stuff. And one guy I talked to, the only time he ever uses water-based is if they're, he's doing a, a piece for someone that can't handle the smell of lacquer because, you know, it gasses off for a few weeks after you spray it and you smell it for a while. Well, then he'll use water-based and he said he hates messing with it. Well, I do too. I did my, uh, my New Englander console set with water-based and what a pain. I'll never, ever do it again. So I can't get the good solvent base though, right? The, 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 the state has made it, our, our government and all of their wisdom has made it so that I can't buy good solvent based lacquer. Now they can put city buses on the street that put so much black smoke in the air that would make a, a, a smokestack in the 1890s put that to shame. But uh, you know, there we go, there's our government at work, okay? Um, I could go on a rant on that one for a while, so I think I'll stop on that right now. But I will show you what I get, though. Let me show you. Let me zoom in here and give you a look at this. Now, this this stuff does not have a great reputation with a lot of people. If you go out on any of the forums and you look and you see, you know, what what people are using, what people hate, what they love, you know, people will try to get Mohawk and um, and uh, other you know expensive lacquer, Sherwin Williams and stuff, but that stuff's hard to find. You can't just go to a store and buy it in most places and try to find somebody on the internet that actually will sell it to you and ship it to you. It's tough. So what I was looking for was a cheap, easy, if I need it today, I can go get some to make it work. I want to be able to go to Home Depot and, or Lowe's and pick something up. Well, so I've been using this stuff here. Now I'm going to get all kinds of comments but I don't care. I get good results using the HVLP. I wouldn't use this any other way. I'm using just this ordinary deft clear wood finish. It's a brushing lacquer. What the heck is brushing lacquer? I never heard of brushing lacquer before. Lacquer is something you spray. Well, they, they sell this brushing lacquer as a way to get around those regulations. You know, the wonderful EPA. They, they, try, they get around that by selling this with very little, if any, solvent in it. So this stuff, you lay it down and it takes a long time to dry and it will flow for a long time. And so you can brush it on and because it flows for a long time, it levels out. But I use this and the way I use this, it says on here, probably in five different places, do not thin. I don't care. I don't follow directions. I do what I want to do. I take this. And I'm real loosey-goosey about how I do it. It's not scientific. I pour some of this in one of my measuring deals right here. Okay, I'll fill this up about, about a, oh, halfway or a third. And then I'll take the lacquer and just splash the lacquer thinner to splash some in there. And then I stir it up. And when I lift this up, when it runs off of here readily without running off like water, it's a little thicker than water. And so the drops form up for a second before they drop off. That's when it's right. If I, if I put too much lacquer thinner in, then I add some more lacquer. If I, put, if I haven't put enough in, I add some more thinner. I do that until it looks about right. You buy this stuff for about 10 bucks a can. It may be a little more now. I don't know. I bought a whole bunch last time I went, so I haven't bought it in about a year. And if you're using one of these, it goes a lot further. You know, it lasts a lot longer. And it's not catalyzed, so it has a good shelf life. It's okay. You go ahead and mix this up, like I said, you put some in this gun and you can shoot and it turns out great. Now, you know, there's all kinds of information on how to shoot with one of these guns. All I can say to you, if you get one, is practice, practice, practice. Get some junk wood and practice, okay? Because I'll tell you something, the thing that bites me or used to bite me is I would lay it on and you're supposed to mist it on lightly and it looks rough when I first put it on. So I want to add more and make it smooth. By the time I made it smooth, and shiny looking, it would, there would be so much lacquer on there, it would run down into all the corners and crevices and look horrible. Um, you just mist it on, right? And if it looks a little rough, it will level out and smooth. And that next coat will melt that first one and it kind of melt together. And after about four or five coats of this, doing it that way, it, it looks fantastic. It doesn't look thick. It doesn't look plasticky. It just looks good. Anyway, if you want to learn about actually spraying, there's all kinds of information on the tube on that. But if you want a really cool device, and I don't work for these and no one's paying me to say this. I'm just so happy with it. Um, you buy one of these Uralex spray stations. Mine's a 5500. It's a few years old, so they probably are a different model number now, but the, I'm sure they'll work the same. Check these out, guys. You won't be sorry, I promise. Don't go catch yourself a devil instead. 
You okay, Buster? That's a Christmas present, Buster. Leave it alone. Yeah, he's, oh! <laughs> now Fred's going to check it out. See, it's mine. Fred wants to chew on it. Are you happy, Freddy? Poor Buster. Buster! Hi, Buster. What you do? Oh, is that your mouse, Buster? He's okay. Maybe he needs his medicine. Maybe he needs a break from it. I might give him CBD for a couple days. <laughs> Hi, Buster. Is that your mousey? Hi, Buster. Is that Buster's mousey? Are you kissing it? Buster. Mouse. Stop with the mouse. He That's... his own head. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's how they kill him, I think. They thump oh, him to death. They scare him to death. Gonna... Get the toe clean. All of a sudden, in the middle of this, he's got to clean his toenails. <laughs> <laughs> he, could be, he could probably be chasing the great antelope, right? And he'd have to stop and clean his tail or something. Do you remember Mr. Fella in Indiana? Yeah. So Mr. Fella caught a baby rabbit, and I let the rabbit go, so the rabbit didn't, nothing happened to the rabbit. But while he was carrying the rabbit, before I figured out what he was doing, he's carrying it, he sets the rabbit down, stops to, to lick his tail, and then picks the rabbit back up because the rabbit didn't run away. And I had to make him give me the rabbit. All right, let's go ahead and plug this thing in and give it a shot. This is a first power-up. You know, you've seen all the work we did. And uh, we're going to go ahead and see if that work was effective. Uh, I think it will be. I was very careful. took a lot of time. That's why it took so long to get this next video out because I spent a lot of time recapping this. And as I said, it needed just about every resistor replaced. So I'm going to go ahead and plug it into Variac. I always do that when I first bring it up. And then I'll take it off my noisy Variac afterward. But for right now, let's, uh, let's do the Variac thing. Okay, radio. Let's see. Is it on? Now it is. Radio is on. I got the knobs on here. I, I, I really, John from Arkansas taught me that a long time ago. It's always better to have the knobs on if you can when you're operating the radio, even if it's not a hot chassis set. Just smart thing to do. All right, here we go with the Variac. All right, like I said, radio is on. Let's see what we get here. Now I'm going to come up slowly because I have a whole bunch of new electrolytics in there and they need to soak in a bit. So let's come on up here about 40, let's go do about 45 volts. Current is coming up slowly like I expect, no spikes yet. All right, so we're at about, eh, we're at about 45 volts. I don't know if you can see it, I've got some dim lights here. So we're just letting it soak in a bit. Let's unplug all the things that make noise. I'm okay with 45 volts. I don't see any problems with current. Let's come on up to 60 volts. 60 volts. So far so good guys. Let's see if we can get that speaker in there too. Alright, there we go. Okay, there I think you can see that a little better now. Alright, we've been sitting at 60 volts for a minute. Let's go on up to uh, Oh, let's say, let's do 70 volts, 70 volts, current still steady. Oh, check it out, I got some noise from the speaker already at 70 volts. Let's, let's go to 80 volts. Check it out guys, radio station, that's a good thing. Uh, I don't know if these, let me check something out here. Nope. I've got some vintage photography lights that I, that I have LEDs in. They give me, they're, they're a different um, 
you know, heat color temperature than the ones I work in. They add a little bit more color to the picture and I hope it makes it easier to see. I'm going to see how it turns out in editing. Okay, so we uh, let me see. All right, we're hearing a bunch of static. I'm postulating that that is coming from my Variac. I got to get around to that, but you know how it is, man. We're not even at a half an amp yet. Let's go up to 90 volts. 90 volts. So we do have stations. That's really cool. Current is just now barely touching a half an amp. By the way, that uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, the fuse that's in it is a one amp fuse. And I'll probably leave that in there. That's that is about right for this. All right, let's go on up to 100 volts. 100 volts. Current is just above a half amp. About uh, 0.55. Let's do 110 volts and we'll stop there and tune around a bit. 110 volts. 0.6 amps. Let's check this out. Tell you what, guys, that noise is annoying. We know now that that we don't have any spikes at this at this uh, voltage. So let's just go ahead and shut down the Variac and put this thing directly into our, my isolation transformer. It should do better. Where they remain even to this day, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. As the church moved outward from Jerusalem. There's something around here that's giving a bunch of noise. I'm pretty sure that's not uh, that's not native to the radio. I think that's coming from outside. All right, so that's AM. We'll go back to AM in a bit. I want to figure out that noise if I can, but let's see if we get anything on FM. I haven't tried that yet. All right, so these lights will change when I go to FM. Okay, that's FM. Let's see what we have here. Oh yeah. Check it out. About Trump. What a great meeting it was. How much progress. So much so that the Senate passed the tax reform bill out of committee. Oh yeah. Let's. let's dead no. in the Senate because the Senate hates Trump. The stock market hit a new high. The Congressional Black Caucasian. So this this is just uh, this is remember this is just first power up to see if what I did worked. And you know what? I don't even have the antenna hooked up to the FM now. It's hooked up to the AM still. Let's move it over here to FM. Ah, come on. Oh yeah, check that out. And Franken are given a pass. And Coco, messy hair, big sweater. Temperatures are falling, and so are Uptown Cheapskate's prices. Shop Uptown Cheapskate, where you'll find all the fall. I haven't heard Pat Benatar in years. I like Pat Benatar. I always did. Okay, so far so good, guys. I haven't aligned it. I haven't done anything yet. I don't need to listen to that. That's nice. As we head into Sunday afternoon, it's my 99.5. More music, more variety. Brand new music right now from... Just picture everybody naked. Nice Sunday music, huh? Medical emergency. Stars in country. And a smidge of awesome. K-Bull 93. All right. Dad gave us a diamond necklace. For yeah, lucky kid. Walt Disney dream of reinventing the way we live. We call it Epcot. 
spelled E-P-C-O-T. Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. EPCOT will be a planned environment demonstrating to the world what American communities can accomplish through proper control of planning and design. <laughs> ah, proper control, planning, and design. Yeah, go ahead and tell me what I can do with my house. Nice. I'm glad that idea hasn't taken off. And fell away from the church. Later, many of the same people had... Sounds good, man. Now let me show you something. The only antenna I have on the FM right here is this that little short antenna going over to my blind, you see? That's maybe, maybe, uh, it might be three feet long. I don't think it is. Okay, let me uh, let me try this AM again. I, it's going to be noisy. I, I've got to align it and stuff too, so let's see. I haven't even tried the phone all. I'm not going to mess with that right now. Oops, it needs an antenna on the AM. There we go. Soul and divinity. He gives himself to us as food, and that's love. The total gift of self. Well, it is tuning great, so I'm convinced that sound's coming from, uh, you know, offshore from this thing. And this is and all of the IFs, all three stages of IF, the FM and the AM share um, share the you know part of the IF circuit. Ooh, that quieted it down, man. I put, I just connected a ground up. Just let me show you what I did. All I did was connect a, a wire to the ground connection on the antenna, and then uh, yeah, that quieted it down. I plugged it right into the uh, the ground uh, um, the ground part of my plug, so that helped. Yeah, it's still noisy, but not as noisy. See? So, okay. When I take it upstairs, that's going to be gone. Okay. Let me show you what goes on with the lights here, okay? Um, when the radio is on, there's always a light that lights up the dial, regardless of which band of the radio you're on, AM or FM. And then there's a light down here that's on. These will be on, obviously, on the dial face. There's a light down here that's on when it's on AM. When I go to FM, the other one lights up. See, they're just touching the chassis right now. The other one lights up when I go to FM. Now, when I go to phono, they both go off. Okay, that tells you the phonograph's on. And again, that's this radio doesn't have a built-in phonograph, but it does have a phono connection on the back. All right, great. So what do I know after doing this? Well, I know the radio will work. Okay, I know that the work I did isn't, uh, isn't causing any serious problems. I'm going to check all the voltages. That's okay. Um, I also know that uh, uh, both AM and FM are working now. FM wasn't working at all before. I don't know if you remember from my initial test. But I think I, I totally by accident, I edited out the part where I was trying to get FM and what I meant to say early on was that I got no FM at all. It would it just plain wouldn't work on FM. Um, I didn't even get any hiss. So I, I'm, you know, when I did the complete recap, some capacitor in there or some resistor was causing enough problems, so I wasn't getting FM. So now I'm getting good FM, getting good AM. Needs an alignment. I can tell that. Um, it it uh, it's going to work just fine. Lots of volume. The amplifier's working fine. That's six L six boys that get warm. Um, so I think we're in good shape. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish up some things. I'm going to deoxid these switches because they're the switches and pots. They are noisy. I'll take care of that. Uh, I'm going to clean and lube this tuning condenser, and I've got to replace these grommets here. All right. So I'm going to put those grommets on. I can do that with this whole sub chassis in place. I'll take one screw out at a time and I'll put a screwdriver in there and lift that up just enough to get the grommet out. And I'll put a new grommet in and reverse the process. So I've got three of them to do. Actually four. One, two, three, four. This transformer, there's a couple of screws 
that don't have nuts on them and I, these, they're opposite corners. I don't know why. I noticed that when I was working on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put those on and tighten this guy down. That shouldn't be like that. And I'll do an alignment. All right, guys, let me get back to work and finish up those things. Okay, let's try doing one of these grommets and see how hard it is. I might have to loosen all four before I can get one of them out, but that's okay. Let's just give it a shot and see. So get in here and get this. This they always have these bushings. I, I just call them I call them flared bushings. All right, and they just they they look like a washer until you dig them out of there. And there's that's what they look like. Okay, let me loosen the other ones just so I can make it easier to lift this up just enough to get that out. I may have to cut the thing, but I don't want to because I want to have something to look at to tell me what it should look like. And these are still soft, so they're flexible, but they are starting to crack. Yikes. Well, there seems to be nothing for it. I'm just going to have to tear it, tear it up. So you lift up on the chassis a little bit. I find this to be a convenient spot. I'm not putting enough pressure on it to cause that any problems. Just enough to help ease that guy out of there. There. You know, it's just a little grommet. Let me see if I can't find something that'll work. All right, this is a little too thick. Just big all the way around. Mm, that might work. Let me see here. You want to avoid the temptation to use tools to pry these buggers in there because uh, that tears them up. That's just going to be just a little too big. It's just a little too big. You can kind of see that. I, I don't want to tear it up trying to get it in. So. I think I may have stumbled on some good ones here. These are Philco ones. These are chassis. Uh, tuner chassis grommets for Philco's. Hey, this may be just about right. Look at that. The diameter is about right. Thickness is pretty close. <sighs> Let me clean that up. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. You get so excited about wanting to put it in there, you forget that uh, you don't want it to look like you don't want it to look sloppy. Boy, these buggers are tough. All right, so I might have to do is loosen this a little more and lift it up some because the problem is I can't get in there because there's no room for the grommet to go in. It doesn't want to. There we go. There we go. Okay, look at that, guys. Isn't that beautiful? Now, where did I put that bushing? Here we go. Here's the bushing and the screw. We'll go just get it started. We're not going to tighten it down. Okay. Perfect. Let's, uh, let's get the other ones, okay? We'll do this one. There is the screw. It's really simple. Get the bushing out of there. Still soft, but they feel too spongy. Rubber goes one of two ways when it begins to fail. Uh, in one case, it will get it will get uh, soft and spongy like these have done, and others will get hard and crumbly. And it just depends on what it is that they're they've been kind of living in, you know. If they live in, in an oily environment, they'll get spongy. If they're in a, an acidic or a hot or a dry environment, they'll get dry and crumbly. You can kind of see there's a fat side and a skinny side. They feel a little slimy, actually. Okay. Start with one part of it under, and it's really hard unless you raise that chassis up because it has nowhere to go if you don't. Kind of go like that. Push it in. Keep going around it, and there you go. There you go. Take your bushing, 
Put it back on there. The bushing will prevent you from squeezing it down too tightly because the bushing is a positive stop. Because this rubber will not last very long at all if you squeeze it down real tight. If you squish it. So right there it stops. You see, just before the rubber really starts to squish out a lot. Now I want it a little bit loose right now. Let's do the third one here. So you do them one at a time and, and you don't have to remove this chassis. And believe me, removing that chassis would be very unfun. We don't want, that is not my idea of a day in the park. Just go ahead and rip that apart because you're not going to use it. And uh, then you get in here and break the other one loose and slide her out. Okay. And get in there and pry that up a little and go to work. You want to pry it up a lot. There's wires attached to all this stuff and you don't want to stretch them. There we go. You got to lift it up enough or it won't go in there. I'm sorry my hand keeps getting in the way, guys. It's, uh, it's tough to do without your hands getting in the way. Okay. One more. Tear that out of there, be ruthless about it. Get that out of there. Okay, so far so good. Most, by the way, most uh, tuner chassis only have three grommets. This one has four. Pry that up a little. Get in here and clean that out so it isn't sticky. So I'm going to start it like that. Now, see, so you got to lift it up so that that rubber has somewhere to go when it gets down in the hole. Otherwise, it just pushes back on you. And then you kind of work it down in the hole as you go around. It's not that hard if there's room, and then it just pops in like that just did. Okay? And of course, you're just going to take the same screw. And the same shoulder bushing or flare bushing come in here and now these are going to turn them down till they stop till they tighten because that 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 uh, flare bushing keeps them from going any further and so you just tighten it down but even though that's tightened down you see that can still flex let me show you see that all right so now I'm just going to tighten all four of them down just get on there and don't, don't ape on it, just uh, tighten it down normally. Alright, four new chassis grommets installed, that job's done. Okay boys and girls, uh, we're going to wrap it up there. We are going to start next time with powering this thing up after we sprayed it with uh, the homebrew um, contact cleaner. In fact, it's had a chance to sit for probably a week or so, get everything good and dry. And I haven't powered it up yet, so we're going to do that next time. So uh, we'll let you go for now. And from your western outpost in Salt Lake City, this is Michael. That's all for now.